Okay, good evening. Welcome once again to the open mic. I'm still in Bolton at the Lord Island Coffee. And it's a great venue. But besides music, there's also poetry and comedy. This young man is going to perform one of his poems, or maybe two, in the next few minutes. He's named Donald. Donald? Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Are you alright? Fine, thanks. Yeah? Yes. And how long have you been coming to the open mic? Oh, for a, a year, maybe. A year? Yes. Yeah. Year. And do you like, do you like it here? Yeah, it's very good, nice, nice good. feeling, yeah, it's a good feeling, great place, yeah, nice mix of people. So when did you start to write poetry? About 20 years ago. 20 years ago, yes. yeah. And do you find it easy or hard? <laughs> Fairly easy. Fairly easy, so it just comes natural? I think so. Yeah, yeah. So what's your point about different things? I've got three different samples tonight. I've got political, I've got a war poem written for Amnesty International. A political, uh, I've yeah. Got a political poem and I've got a psychiatric poem. And a psychiatric yeah, so Psychiatric. I do psychiatric Oh, right, okay, yeah. So you're going to perform one in a few minutes, yeah? That's right, okay, so thank you very much for the interview. No, I'll stop it now. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to read. Um, I'd like to read a few poems. I've picked three as sample different poems: a war poem, a, a political poem, and a psychiatric poem. The war poem first is called "Not One of Us." How can I kill? Let me count the ways in darkest night and blood-soaked days. In the name of righteousness, indeed or political power or human greed. I can kill with hate or intolerance. I can kill with a minimum of fuss. I can kill for any such reason, but I kill because you're not one of us. You're not a member of my tribe. You don't have the same God as me. Although you're a member of the human race, it's beyond my wish to see that a day may dawn on planet Earth that brings peace for you and me. But the distance between our cultures means it's simply not meant to be. I beat you because I have the power, I have the troops on my side. I kill you because I have a gun, not because it's genocide. I hate you because you're one of them, not just because I must. And you hate me respectively because you're not one of us. So human rights don't make me wrong, that's not my point of view. Asserting the balance of power again is what we're trying to do. Last week you tried to kill my friend and it's changed his point of view. So he's become a renegade, and now he's one of you. But you're never going to win the fight. We'll grind you to the dust and drive you from our blessed land, because you're not one of us. Now the distance that lies between us need not be measured in miles, but perhaps in man's inability to understand different styles of religious beliefs and cultures in all the dream is one. But in man's continued advancement, so little have we done. To close the distance between us, between the haves and have-nots, with greed and possession becoming the norm, so much has man forgot. Don't ask for ways of knowing, just accept that we're all one, and bridge the gulf between us, and the human race is one. <laughs> Slightly satirical political poem on the credit crumbs. It's called Humpty Dumpty's Nightmare. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall watching the people doing sod all and wondered if any or all of the men would ever get back to work again. Politically speaking, it's anyone's guess, but no one's taking blame for the mess. Did we really expect politicians or bankers to take any blame? In a shortage of truth explanation, the reasons remain just the same. It's pointless trying to find out how they've got you into a mess. Just accept that your life is buggered and your house is repossessed. Accept that you can't afford petrol or trivial things like food. It's futile pointing the finger of blame. We all know pointing's rude. Now some of the bankers and some of the men went to put Humpty together again. Although the people would grumble and the opposition would moan, they still got Humpty together again with a 50 billion loan. Now the bankers have got their money at last. Politicians can do their bit. But Humpty doesn't give a damn, and you're still in the shit. <laughs> okay. Um, slightly different one. This is called Losing It. I'm losing my centre of gravity. Everything's starting to slip. 
Even my new psychiatrist says he thinks I'm losing my grip. I went for a facelift on Friday to give me a bit of a smile, but all I got was slanted eyes and a new lopsided smile. So I had a transplant on Sunday to try and improve myself. I looked in the mirror the following day and I turned into somebody else. So I'm trying a new direction. I've joined a keep fit club. I do aerobics every day and sit in a bubbling tub with anorexic experts obsessed with physical health and personal assistants mostly in love with themselves. And I thought that I had problems. These guys are something else. I think I'll stuff the aerobics and get back to being myself. I used to be fairly reasonable till I started to lose my grip when all my ideas and everything else promptly started to slip. So hang on to all your treasured thoughts and whatever sails your ship because it's always your thoughts that will save you whenever you're losing your grip. Thank you.